True transformation cannot happen without a renewal of the mind. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mind over matter. If the pain of where you are never exceeds the pain of change, you will always remain the same through a renewal of the mind. And it takes a process. True transformation. Mind, mind, mind over matter. Change your mind, you change your life. Change your life. You gotta go through it to grow through it. Mind over matter. Be clear. Welcome back, everybody. This is the Mind Over Matter podcast. I am Ken Canyon. Yo, Ken Canyon, you better get hyped, baby. I'm ready to rock. <laughs> this one right here is gonna be a good one, baby. Coach Lynch is in the building. Let's go. Hey, everyone, it's Taylor. All right, we got a guest here for us today. <laughs> Taylor said this. Uh, hello, everyone. It's Taylor. What else am I supposed to say? They know me by now, right? It's so proper. She's so proper. And <laughs> right, we got another guest in the building. Glad to have him. Introduce yourself, brother. What's up, Mind Over Matter family? This your boy, Andre. Um, I'm the cameraman behind most of the content you see coming out of I Am Results. So. All right. All right. Glad to have you, man. I mean, you know. Um, so today, we're going to talk about something deep. All right. Coach Lynch. Tell us how you came up, because this was your idea, and I thought it was just fantastic. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so look, first of all, the uh, you know, the titles be cool. We come up with these dope titles. Dope titles. Yeah, this one right here is called Life After Death. Um, I'm, you know, just the title of it is inspired by, you know, the homie B.I.G., rest in peace, uh, Biggie, you know, and um, just Life After Death was the title, but, you know, when, when, when people come into the gym, like, I'm always talking about killing something. Um, when they walk in, they step in from, as soon as they walk in, I'm like, you ready to die? Who ready? Some got to die today. Somebody going down. Who ready to go down? And, you know, they just look at me like, a, and of course, yes, I'm trying to intimidate people. Sure. Yes, I am. But, you know, I got, it's always a method to my madness, and I got mad science behind everything I do. You know what I mean? It's just, you, you know, I'm a little deep with it, man. I might just look like this, but at the end of the day, your boy's super deep with it. All right, so real quick, Ken, I know you're ready to jump in. You're always ready to jump in real quick. You might be the only person I know talk more than me. It's all good, I don't man. think so. Nah, yeah, I'm close. Right. Hey, but so that with that being said, um, Oh, hold up, Ken, I got to tell my story. Oh, okay. I thought you was telling me to go on. Well, go on and tell your story. Yeah, see, you want to tell your story? No, I don't want to tell, tell story. my story. Go tell your story. All right, because we're going to get into how it was inspired after I tell you how go, I was go inspired go ahead, tell your story. to inspire that story. All right? Go ahead, go ahead. Dang. So what happened was, look, man, we're making a lot of, um, <laughs> we're doing a lot of upfitting in, in the gym. Yeah. We're making some upgrades and everything. And I got a bunch of boxes being delivered daily, all week long. Boxes been coming, Amazon, all these different boxes, UPS, FedEx, they just dropping them off, dropping them off. So I've been having to open these boxes up, put stuff together and everything because we just grinding. And I, I got a box cutter in my hand, you know, pretty much all day long. So after I cut the box open and I open it up and I get the parts together, you know, I'm sticking the box cutter back in my pocket so I don't lose it because I got to use it again. Right. Yeah. All right. Now. Every night I keep going home with the box cutter in my pocket because I've been rocking so long with the box cutter. Like, so, you know, I, I'm waking up and then and I'm like, dang, all right, I got to take this stuff out my pockets that, that I had there yesterday, put it back in my pockets, and I keep having a box cutter. So here I am in the gym early in the morning, 5 o'clock, and it's before the 5.30 clash. And now, you know, I walk up on some of the ladies talking junk like I usually do, and I'm like, yo, what's up? Who ready to die today? And... and you know, one of the ladies, I ain't even going to say her name, but she like, oh, it ain't going to be me. So uh, like, I'm like, yo, listen, hold on. So, you know, I'm trying to let them know that I'm, I'm, I'm really not, you know, trying to fight or beef or nothing like that. So I put my hands in my pocket because I'm not trying. I don't want you to get all, you know, defensive and all this right, stuff. So I put right. my hands in my pocket to chill. But when I reach in my pocket, guess what I feel? Your box cut. Uh -huh. My box cut. <laughs> so immediately, like, you know, I'm from up top. You know? uh -huh. I, I, I pull the box cutter out real quick. So as soon as I right. felt it, I pulled it out. She felt like she wanted to get aggressive. I pulled out the box cutter. I tapped it on my leg. It said, snap. And then when it said snap, she seen that blade. She like, oh. Uh, she like, oh. I'm like, yo, who ready to die? You know what I mean? Something got to die. I'm going to kill something today. So now I get, you know, I get in my mood. It's 5 o'clock. I'm ready to rock. I've been up since 2.51. Like, y'all just got up. I'm ready. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, somebody got to go. So 
She like, well, it ain't going to be me this, that, and third. I'm saying, listen, let me tell y'all something, man. The good Lord told me something got to die today. Okay. She's like, oh, no, Jesus, God, they ain't tell you. None of them they ain't put the word kill in your spirit. They didn't tell you that. I said, you was a lie. That's what I told her. Okay. I said, I told her you was a lie. And I said, and listen, I told her that God told me that something got to die. Mm. Okay. It, okay. It, and so I proceeded to say, you know, I walked them all over to the middle of the floor and I started my speech for the class mm. based on something got to die in order for something to live. Mm -hmm. Hence, life after death. Yeah. All right. So I ain't going to get into all that right now. I but know you want to. No, 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 no. Because we got to go into the story first. Right. Okay. And then we're going to come back and we're going to really get into the nitty gritty of, 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 of how, how it all goes down. Life after death. Yes. You got something you want to say, Taylor? No, I'm ready for this story because I know the story. They don't know the story. Yet. Some of the people know the story. I but um, tell the story. But so life after death is not so much. Uh, we're not talking about necessarily physical death, but we want to use the physical death of a story uh, as a metaphor um, to kind of go into what we're going to talk about. The things in our lives that must die yeah. for us to live. So there was a story out by a guy named Mitch Album, and he's a reporter. Uh, he wrote a book called Tuesday with Mari. And what it was was it's called Tuesday with Mari, Tuesdays with Mari, an old man, a young man, and life's greatest lessons. And what this was about, Mitch was Mari Schwartz was Mitch's instructor 20 years prior. Okay. okay? Mitch had become this. He would give him life's tips along the way. He would tell him things that had him thinking, man, you know you have professors that yeah. impart stuff into your life. Yeah. You know, and when Mitch graduated, he said, I'm going to keep in touch with him. He said, but, but you know how life is. He got married. Right. He became yeah. successful. Right. He was on a lot of, he was on sports reporters. He's a big time okay. guy. He ended up seeing Maury on a special one night on television. Mm -hmm. And Maury was talking about he had been diagnosed with LAS, uh, ALS, ALS, Lou mm -hmm. Gehrig's disease. Oh, wow. And he was okay. talking about what it was like to be dying. Mm -hmm. And Mitch froze and he saw it and was like, what? wait a minute, that's my professor. So he contacted Mari and what he did for 14 weeks, he spent 14 Tuesdays with him and what Mari did wow. was impart things about his life. And he basically said, he basically talked about, he talked about looking at life's perspectives. Okay. So, and, and I want to give you this because I want, I want to give you this because this is something that he said. He says, you know, as for Mari, he was in his 70s when he was diagnosed with ALS, mm -hmm. also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. ALS eats the body's nerves from the inside out. Mm -hmm starting with the person's legs and working up. As the disease takes hold, the victim, as it takes hold, the victim becomes frozen inside a lifeless cocoon in his body while his mind is perfectly awake. Now think about that, y'all. Your body can't move. I knew this was a crazy disease, but I didn't realize. It says, after just a few years, even the help of the oxygen machine cannot thwart your mortality. As the lungs fill up with the poisonous phlegm and breathing becomes impossible, a diagnosis of ALS is a certain death sentence. Mm. So what happened with Mari was he wrote short articles about living in shadow, death's shadow. Wow. Okay? So when, when, when Mitch saw this, he saw him on... Ted Koppel at that time, late night, mm -hmm. he said, I got to go see this guy. I got to go see this guy. So for 14 weeks, he would fly in and Mari would give him lessons on living while you're dying. Mm. And he said, that, and it was so powerful because he said this, he said that each week it was brought a new topic under theme. They talked about the world, about feeling sorry for oneself, about regrets and about death about his family, about the fear of dying, about money and love and culture. And he said, people don't think about death. He said, we don't even really think about that. We don't believe it because right. if we did, we would act differently. Right. And what he did, he gave him all of these things, all of these things, principles to live by. So it says like this, he says, when battling to make the most of the remaining time, 
Maury had developed things to live by. So he developed four things, five things. He said one of them was accept what you are able to do and what you're able not to do. Okay, he says that, that. Accept the past as past without denying it or discarding it. He said, learn to forgive others and to forget, learn to forgive yourself and to forgive others. Don't, so the next one is do not assume that it's too late to get involved. But the next one and the last one, the one we're going to talk about today is he said, in order to live, mm. we must first learn to die. Mm. First, but first learn to die. That's the one we're going to discuss today. That's best quoted by yours truly every day that you <laughs> enter the facility of the great ones. But I think they were, but you know what? Yeah. As what you're saying a lot of times, oh, yeah. actually, that's why I actually came to the gym. I saw you on a video on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. all went to school. And, that's, and I said the same, same thing, thing then. Oh, and, but wow. I said, somebody going to die. I was drawn to that. That's I what said, I'm talking about. I said, man. He said something profound. Somebody's got to die. Maybe it'll be me. Right. And because I knew exactly what you what meant. What I was talking about. I knew exactly what you meant. There's a part of us that has to die to live. Right. So let's talk about that today. Let's talk about the first thing. So what we're going to do today, we're going to talk about all of the things in every aspect of life. We're going to talk about what God had to say about it. We're going to mm -hmm. talk about what nature's had to say about it. Yeah, yeah, and we're going to talk yeah. about the human experience. So let's start with yeah. nature. That's, good. That's real good. That's real good right let's there. Let's start with nature. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, man, listen, check it out, man. All I know is back in the day, I'm talking about way, 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 way back in the day. Huh? Mm -hmm. We had to Go outside, right? <laughs> right? We had to go outside. Okay. We had to find what we was going to eat. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? We had to sit around in the bushes and we had to wait for it and wait for it, wait for it with a, close enough. Wait for it to hold on. We had to sneak up on it, right? Mm -hmm. And we had to jump out with a big old spear or something and then stab it, kill it, drag it on back to the crib, right? Right. right. Then we had to clean it. Right? Yeah. right? We had to prepare it to eat food. We had to prepare it to cook it, right? Yeah. right? Then we had to eat it. Right. Right? Right. We would stay out all day long until we found something that we could bring back to the crib for us to eat and family to eat. Right? Yeah. Right. So if we didn't kill something, mm -hmm. we didn't eat. We didn't eat. That's right. And if we didn't eat, we didn't live. True. Yeah. So at the end of the day, something had to die in order for us to live. That's true. Does that make sense? It makes a whole lot of sense. That's Why it don't make no sense these days to other people? Mm. What, 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 what you think about that, Drake? I, what do you, you think about? Think about nature for a minute. Mm. Um, nature has to stay in balance. Mm. Think about it. You ever notice how even in Africa, and I watch specials like this, yeah. when the grass dies, when the old grass dies, when they eat it up, like it burns up, all of the plants eat it up, what does, what does God do? What does nature do? It rains, right? Mm -hmm. So what? So new grass can be born. It's a cycle of life. So that other animals can come eat that grass, right? Yep. So they can live. The wildebeest. Mm -hmm. They come eat that grass so they can live, right? Yeah. Then what? So they got to be healthy so the lions yeah. can come eat them yeah. so they can live. Vicious cycle. Yeah. Vicious cycle. And it's the vicious cycle, mm -hmm. but it's the cycle of life. Cycle of life. Right, so it really isn't vicious. Right. The truth of the matter is, Everything has a order. it isn't vicious. It's an order and equal. Exactly. Yeah, but I'm not using vicious in that sense. Oh, I know. If I'm, you know, what I'm saying, if I'm out there crushing something, if I just hit 30 points, I'm like that boy vicious. Like, you know, you understand <laughs> okay. what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all, so you know, you from here. You know, you from over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you from here. I'm over here. You know, I say vicious. He's like, no, I ain't, I ain't talking about vicious. Uh, I'm like, come uh, on, man. No. Come on. Yeah. I mean, yeah. vicious as Top. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah, talk yeah. about dope. Like, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, you want to get on That's all good. That's good. That's good, though. And, 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 and so I want, I, want to, I want to think about this. Everything has to be in balance. And, and, and the, the truth is, is that if things don't, in, in, in nature, we're going to talk about nature first. If things don't die, if they don't, what happens if those things are out of balance and when things are thrown out of balance, when there's too much of a species that lives, what happens now all of those species can't thrive yeah. because it's too many of them. Right. Right. So some of them have to be used for food for another species right. so that they can live. Right. And, and so when I looked at, because I used to be the kind of kid I know what I'm about to say, something. I'm a big, I'm a big tough guy. 
But when I was young, man, I used to hate watching like, you know, Mutual of Omaha when like a lion would kill an antelope. I hated it. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, get away, antelope. Mr. Antelope, get away. Mm -hmm. And we get caught. <laughs> like, dang, they got caught and killed. Yeah. But it was necessary. Yeah, I, well, I used to be like, get him. Right. <laughs> get him. I used to be like, get him. I can believe that. Yo, yo I I, mean, hey, listen, man, I watched the movie and root for the villain. I'm like, get him, yeah, get him. Man. You know what I mean? I'm rooting for the bad guy. Get away. I hope he get away. I want to see him get away on the island with all the millions. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, don't, I hope he get caught. Nah, that ain't me. Get him. That is so yeah. crazy. <laughs> And, 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 and the thing about that is, so when we go, when we talk about nature, and then well, we're going to move on to the next part of this thing, because this thing is deep. Mm -hmm. Now, God said something about this. Mm -hmm. oh, man. Now, everybody mm -hmm. at this table is a believer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of us believe Hallelujah. that Jesus died for our sin. Yep. Make no mistake about it. We ain't hiding it. We ain't talking about nothing else. You know, people can believe what they want to believe, and we hope you listen to this podcast, because we're not saying we're not down on what you believe. But this is what we believe. So, God has something to say about oh, yeah, this. Yeah. All right. You so, got it. Dad. You tell me what he said. Let's all right. See you. Matthew 10, 39. Come on. Huh? Come on. Come on. Jesus uh -huh. says, he who finds his life will lose it. Mm. Huh? And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. That's right. Wow. Now, I know she ain't tell me that he ain't tell me that. Come on now. When he said it in Matthew... Right. 1039. Right. See, she ain't know about that. But let me tell you what he also said it in. Matthew okay. 16, 25. Come he on. said it in Mark 8, 35. Uh -huh. And Luke 9, 24. And Luke 17, 33. And oh, John yeah. 12, 25. Do I have to keep going? No. Nah. I hope she reads. <laughs> this. I hope she. No, I hope she. Listen. I hope she listened to this podcast. And then I hope she go back and say, yo, he said this first. He said that third. Right. And Jesus said it at that time. So if Jesus said it at that time in the Bible, why Jesus can't tell me that? Because I want to know that. Did, did Jesus tell uh, David to just punch Goliath in the, in the face and, and see if he's going to come back next week? <laughs> put a right. knot on his Yeah, yeah. Put a, go ahead and put a knot on, on, on Goliath's head. Like, and go, no, it's no, so what did, what did he tell David? You got to kill. He chose David to kill Goliath. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. He ain't. Choose him to, to harm him, to right. hurt him, to, to run him away. Right. You had to kill Goliath. Right. That's deep. Because right. think about this, though. And hey, y'all, what were we, we going to say, Dre? Well, I was going to add to what he was saying about David. Um, you know, I think back in Psalms 51, where he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew the right spirit within me. So mm -hmm. that means that your fleshly mind that you already thought about, that, right. that yeah. pretty much created your perception of life, has to die in order for God's mind to be created within you because that's a clean spirit. Without question. You know what I'm saying? What that's you got right. in you is already there. It led you to death where you are in the flesh right now. That's right. You know, you ain't got no job. You always right. broke. Right. You always led to dead end ideas. You got all inspiration, uh -huh. but you don't got no aspiration to go behind a dedication. Right. So uh, oh, what? 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 Now you're just, what? Now you're just you know, wavering. You know no, what I'm saying? Inspiration. Right. He no. said, I say that again. Spit that again. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay, you bring it back. Spit that can you bring that up? You have flow. Some inspiration, uh -huh. but then it can lead to aspiration where, where people fall short is in that dedication, dedication. because yeah. getting to that end point, that's the dedication. You got to get consistent right. in that thing. Oh my that's gosh, right. that go with everything that's on this paper yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, okay, so, so go, ahead. go with the woman with the issue of blood. Oh, come on so now. Come on now. she definitely had that issue for 12 years. Yeah, and so yeah. what she had to do was what she had to objectively find her way to God. Yep. So she knew everybody in that crowd, they all wanted a feeling from Jesus. Right. She was looking for her future. She knew I need to walk from ah. all the way up to God. Okay, but what we don't, what we got to realize is she was smelly. She was bleeding. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? She was right. nasty. She had to drop her pride. She mm -hmm. literally had to drop her pride she to go for her future. Mm. And she was objectively right consistent just to, get to, mm -hmm. just to get to God so she can be healed. Wow. And, see, and see, that's so dope because like that, that's so dope. dope because people are so afraid 
to recognize who they are. We said it's yeah. in the car. People, in, yeah. in, in, in order for you to change who you are or allow someone else to change who you are, you have to know who you are first. Woo! You have just to know that. your identity. Yep. Because until you know who you are to you, yep. then you can't change you. Exactly. If you are denying that I am a smoker, I'm an alcoholic, I'm a sex addict, I don't want to go to the gym, I'm lazy, I'm fat. If you're yep. denying all these realities about you, then you can't change you. Right. So you're not allowing what is already killing you to wow. die. So you can live that's good boy that's good that's good that's that's good and and and, and let's go back let's go back to um let's go back to the bible one other thing Mm -hmm. y'all remember we always say god is love yeah but god is love god is war god is all those things and remember what god told saul now i want to go he told saul to go the reason why he fell out well, yeah. fell out with Saul. What did he tell him? He said, go to the village yes, and did. kill everything. Take yeah. no prisoners. He yeah. said, kill it all. Yep. He said, kill animals, kill everything. Kill everything. And what did he not do? He didn't follow He him. didn't follow kill him. everything. I'll be followed. He, he really told me to kill. Yeah. I didn't <laughs> say kill. I'll be <laughs> killing everything walking through that door. <laughs> all of it got to die. Mm. Huh? <laughs> Listen, but look. <laughs> When, when I made the reference to, to David and Goliath, mm-hmm. I, I made it because there's a lot of giants in these people's lives. That's good. Huh? That's good. And you got to kill these, these giants got their foot on your neck. Yeah. You, you understand what I'm saying? These yeah, yeah. Gi- giants is having their way with you. Yeah. They, they, they making you do stuff that you don't want to do because yeah. you know you're trying to live another life. And you, you better kill that Goliath. Yeah. Huh? You yeah. better kill it. You can't play with it. Just get the foot off your neck. He coming back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He coming back because he having his way with you. Yeah. You just got the foot off for a second. So I use right. David and Goliath. But now I'm going to be Saul and I got to kill something. Now you don't want to be Saul. No, no, no. No, no, no that's what I'm saying. He told, he told him. To, he told him. He told to, Saul. He told him. Go and kill yeah, everything. Yeah, so, so what I'm doing now. Killing everything. I'm killing everything. But Saul did but kill Saul, everything. Yeah, but see, now I'm, I'm the you're, new you're, one to prove. You're going to be like David. I'm the new one to prove. You're going to be like David. See, right, no, see David, David, David right, no, wouldn't right. think what, he, what God told him. If God said, get them all, they're gone. Man, everybody that God told to kill, that's who I'm going to be. <laughs> he told him that God told him to kill. Then how many more you, you got to there? Kill who else he told to kill? You want to just kill something? I'm killing something. Everything come through the door. Got to die. <laughs> It'd be an old lady come through the door. She'd be 75. I'd be like, you ready to die? She'd Joshua. Like, no. Joshua. She told, so told, told Joshua. Joshua yeah. When you yeah. go in there, kill them all. Yeah. Kill them all. Yeah. He told kill them all. And so the thing about it is, if he said this, yeah. there's something about the purging of them all. That's right. yeah. There is restoration in yeah. that. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's life after death. Yeah. Because, yeah. And if you think about it, oh. if, if anybody's got cancer cells, you can't leave them. You can't right. leave yeah. any yeah. of them. That's right. You have to kill them all. Yep. Because if you one. don't kill them all, they'll right. reproduce after their own yeah. kind. That's yeah. right. If we don't kill everything that's going on in our lives, what will happen? It's going to reproduce gonna after reproduce. its own kind. Yeah. That's right. That's, and that's why we come in, That's why we're going to go to the, the human the experience. The third thing. Right. Mm-hmm. The, the, the third experience. thing is the human experience. Yeah, and we got to go. And like he just said, he, he, he said cancer, right? He said cancer, but you got to think about the things that's going on in your life. The yeah. things that are messing with you, the things you're trying to move away from. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if, it's, if, if, if you're trying to get married, right? But you're still this player. You know what I mean? You still want to hang out with all these different type of people, collect numbers, be all up in people's faces and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yo, you got to kill that single person. You got to right. kill that player. You, you got to kill that daggone uh that, that that womanizer or whatever yeah, you is, the you know, you know, yeah, you got to kill it. That's you true. got to kill it in order for the monogamous one to live, That's in order right. for the, the, the married one to live. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? If you if, if if you if you're not trying to be on on, on you know on, on drugs and alcohol and stuff like that, then you got to go ahead and kill that addict, man. You got to kill that addict. If I'm gonna be a man, I got to kill the boy. Straight up, that's good. you got. That's yeah. how I be. You know what I'm saying. You got to think about it. Like if you was at the crib when you was like 16, 17, 18, you yeah. start disrespecting your folks and all mm-hmm. that type of stuff. They like, oh, okay, all right, you 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 ready to be a man now? Right. All right, well you gonna have to go ahead and kill that boy because you got to get up out of here. Right, right. You right. gonna have to get up out you of here to kill and him. find out what's going on. So that's go ahead right. out there and kill that boy. So right. that's where tough love come from. That's yeah. it. You can't stay around here and keep doing all that disrespectful stuff. That's right. that's that's just how it is. And right. there's a lot of people that grew up like. 
like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the parents understood that, yo, this is tough love. This is yeah. just got it got to happen like that. Because when something had to die. about that it, tough love is that's actually the hurt that helps. Right, right. And no one wants it. Right. No, no, no nobody the hurt wants the hurt, the hurt that helps. <laughs> helps. I like yeah. that. I mean, because you're right. It does hurt. But then pain is weakness leaving the body. Mm. That's real. Yeah. 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 Like, you got hurt. You know, I just heard that the other day. Pain is definitely weakness. It is. It is. I think I think the part of the problem is is because we look at things so temporary. Uh, I'm hurting right now. Yeah. Instead of uh, later on, it's going to help me yeah. be the man that I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Well, see, I mean, that's the different. When you start the podcast off talking about the perspective, you it's know, perspective. What I'm saying? you said it about the perspective, and right, right. The, the problem is when people come through the doors of the gym, they don't understand that they're coming. They're coming in the door as one individual, but I expect them to leave out a totally different human being. So yeah. what I want them to do is kill that person that came through the door. If you do not leave out better, if you do not leave out growing, if you do not leave out changing your mentality or changing the way you did something, then you did not kill what you came to kill. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm coming to kill it. You just don't understand it. So at one point in the workout, somewhere around, I'm going to push you. I'm going to say something that will make you do something totally different than the way you was going to do it. And once you have that breakthrough, you would never do it again. So we just killed it. We broke the wall down. We killed the wall. All right, so that's the case. So now y'all ain't know I was going to do this, but I'm about to do something. So I'm going to ask each one of y'all, what in your life do you need to kill? <laughs> All right, so so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with everybody. All right, Taylor. You going to start with me? I'm going to start with you, Taylor. All right, what in your life do you need to kill so something else can live? Um, I need to kill um, my ego. Okay. Y'all might not see it or like feel as much as I do because I'm able to suppress it because I'm, I'm learning. Because you're around two big way, egotistical guys? That too. But when I um, first came around you, Ken, was the first time I, in a long time that I've been around somebody that knew more than me. Okay. All right. Like going to class and everything. Like I was running the school's newspaper. I'm not saying I had the experience my professors had, but it's just what they were teaching me. I was already doing in real life, you know what I mean? So they would ask me to write an article for their class that wasn't about to be published or anything. I'm already like, yo, I got three articles, real articles going on right now. That's real life mm. that, you know, don't even affect your class. Like that ego in me where I'm just like, I need to always con- remain humble. Like, I think that's, that's what still needs to die in me. Okay. Like, that that's ego, good. Where I just, I need to always realize I don't know everything and there's still so much for me to learn. And that's still main reason why I'm always with y'all. Always strive to be with y'all like every day. Just good. for that very reason. Good. Dre, uh, what do you need to kill in you? Uh, what, what, do you what I need to kill in me? Um, fear of failure. Um, wow. You know, for me, I know a lot of people tell me, oh, you know, you're so talented. You can do this. You can do that. You have this great potential. And it's like, it's crazy when everyone else can see it. But then within you, you sometimes don't believe it. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, I can go through and take camera pictures, you know, edit videos. And then like, I'm my own worst critic. And so it'll even prevent me from okay. from even starting a project because I'll be like, nah, I already know I didn't like how I shot, so I'm not even going to do it. But being around you all has motivated me to push past that and just, you know, seeking God with that. You know, you have to you have to try before you can even mess up. Mm. So, you know, that's why I'm really working out within me and, you know, being humble, as Taylor said, to really, you know, take the leadership from you guys to learn, you know, what I need to do. To that's good. That. That's so good. So, yeah. All right, coach. Man, I'm killing everything. Every single thing that I possibly have to kill in order for me to continue to grow. Like, you don't understand. Every single day I wake up, it's like, all right, I gotta I gotta I gotta beat the the, the way I did my routine um yesterday. I gotta I gotta kill that. I gotta I gotta kill that to make that better. I gotta kill the way I prepped my food. I gotta kill the way that um I came in and organized the stuff for the gym. I gotta kill the way I ordered the the the, the supplements. I gotta kill the way I ordered the I, yo every single thing gotta die because you gotta let me let me tell you something. I I have I have a vision right and I have goals and my I'm the person who creates my own standard. All right. There's no business models that came before mine. Mm, that's true. 
listen to what I'm saying. There's no business model like mine. I'm creating it. I have to kill the game because I am the example. Yeah, the prototype. Right. So the businesses that are out there now, the ones that are that are out there now, I have to kill them. Yeah. I have to kill them because they're Goliath. Mm. You, you listen, Gold's Gym been around for ages. But I need them to understand that I I'm I'm the new kid on the block. That this I'm going to change the way that that fitness is approached for Years and years and years to come. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm killing the game. I'm going to make motivation a part of fitness. I'm going to make supplementation a part of the same stop that you got to come. I'm going to make all this stuff happen. So I got to kill that. I got to kill the way I, I approach studying. Yeah. I got to kill what I, everything in me. Got the, the, Yesterday wasn't enough because I ain't get it yet. Mm. And then when I get it, guess what I got to do? I got to kill it. It's dead already. I got I to gotta get something else. I'm hungry. Yeah. If I don't eat, I don't live. And I got to kill to eat every single day. And every day, guess what I got to do? I got to eat. That means something got to die every day. That's good. Something got to die every day. What are you trying to kill, kid? That's good. I think what, what I'm trying to kill the most, I was sitting here listening to y'all. And I think I, the, the thing that I have to kill the most is perfectionism. Perfectionism. Mm -hmm. And for me... I feel like I want to be perfect. I want to strive to keep being better and right. better and better, sometimes to the point of my detriment. Mm. And what I mean by that is I'm going to always do. I'm an always doer. Ever my whole life, I've been a doer. But I got to accept the fact that perfectionism, perfectionism comes out of doing. And I'm never going to. I get perfected through what God has put in me. And so because of that, then I don't ever want to get stifled by it's got to be right. I got to keep doing it. I got to keep doing it. Yeah. I want it to be right. I want to be right. Yeah. And you know what? A lot of people are like that. But for me, I fight that. And I got to kill that because if I don't kill that, it's a lot of people in the graveyard. It wasn't perfect. So I ain't do it. So yeah. for me now, I'm going to do it, but I got to let it go. Once I let it go, it's gone. We perfect it as we roll. So what we got to do is tell the people out there any advice you would give them, quick advice before we go. This is good because everybody, we get to, one thing I like about what we're doing is we're being transparent. You get to look at yourself yeah. in this podcast and what we're doing because we're trying to reach the nation of people. Yeah. So anybody with any pardon thoughts, because the day been on fire to me. It really has. Any, yeah. The day been on fire. Anybody got any pardon thoughts they want to lead the people, Taylor? I just, um, I just keep hearing in my spirit, we have to die daily. Mm -hmm. We die daily. That's, that's, that's it. We die daily. Mm -hmm. So that's everything good. that we're saying right now just, just mm -hmm. wraps that up. That's we, good. We die daily. Die daily. Daily. And we don't like saying that. Like we don't like expressing that all the time. But that's really what we're. I say it every to be day. Doing. You, yes, yeah, you, you do. They like you do. the people that come through them doors. Right. They yeah. supposed to know that you know yeah. what? I, I came to die. Yeah. Yeah. I came to die. But then here's the thing, though. This this is the part that's profound. They come to die. The reason why they don't accept it is because they don't know what's coming to live. To right. take Ooh, the place. Right. Exactly. 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 That's, that's the problem. That's See, that's why they don't that's accept the death. That's right. It. Because what lives in its place. Yeah. Right. That's and it. they're not ready for that part. That's right. So I can't accept the death. That's right. That's good. They don't know. Yeah. That. Yeah. So what, 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 any part of thoughts for you? Honestly, man, I would just tell y'all, look, you have to learn who you are because that that identity piece is so crucial because in order for you to be somewhat okay to let something die, you have to really know what is dying in you. Yeah. So, yeah, man, say with who you are. Pardon thoughts for you, coach? Or you done said it all? I've, I've, I've been killing stuff all day. I'm actually tired of killing right now. You know what I'm saying? I know I got it's, your, it. it's, your, it's your blade dog. Yeah, no, my blade ain't dog. I'm just saying. I'm, my arm tired. My arm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm tired. I'm tired. You know what I mean? Bob and weed for a little bit. But right now, I'm tired of throwing them things. I feel it. Nah, that's good. I just want to leave you one point. It's not how we die. I remember my sister died last year, and um, and I thought about all of the things that maybe she didn't do, but I, I made myself a promise. It's not how I die, but how I live. How I live 
And that's most important. And that's why we're doing this right here. So at the end of the day, how we live is how we will be, be remembered. Mm. All right? That's good. And that's it for today. Until next week. Until I kill again. <laughs> <laughs> Life after death, <laughs> y'all. Oh, you shit. remember the last saying? Hey, you say you it, always you take us out. It. Hey, mind <laughs> over matter, all right? Listen, <laughs> if you don't mind, then <laughs> death don't, don't matter. matter. <laughs> 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 you know you got to end with that always. I <laughs> love it. Mind, mind. mind over matter. Change your mind, you change your life. Change your life. You got to go through it to grow through it. Mind over matter. Be clear.